Broken Arrow, this is Steve Yoder with the City of Broken Arrow Economic Development Team. Normally you see us in the Did You Know series. Today we're going to kind of change paths a little bit because we've been visiting with the Chamber and a lot of the Chamber members um, and a lot of the merchants within Broken Arrow about the, on, on the roundtables. The roundtable discussions have been very valuable. We've received a lot of information about how we're going to reopen on May the 1st and uh, April 24th, which is, I guess, the day that I can finally get my hair cut. Uh, and, and so some of the, the questions and some of the concerns that have come out of those meetings has mostly been about cleaning. So we thought we'd bring in the experts. Mike Rice with Phoenix Restoration is here. We want to talk about our cleaning um, techniques, uh, cleaning products, cleaning services that we have going on. And so, again, we brought in the experts to talk to us about how we can move forward as, as a town, as a city, and answer some of the questions that they might have. So the, the main questions that, that came out of these roundtables, what do we need to do to open our business? What are the cleaning requirements? What do we need to do to keep our customers and our employees safe? So I will turn it over to you. All the pressure's on you now. Thanks. So if you don't mind, uh, tell us all about what you do and, and then uh, how we can help Broken Arrow. All right. Uh, my name is Mike Rice. I'm with Phoenix Restoration here in Broken Arrow. And a lot of those questions you've had are, uh, from the roundtables, they're kind of a twofold answer. Uh, part of it's going to be cleaning and part of it's going to be CDC, EPA recommendations from the government on how to protect your employees and yourself mm -hmm. from getting those viruses. Uh, as far as cleanings go, there's a difference between deep cleaning and a regular clean and a disinfection. Um, regular cleaning would be what you would do every day. Let's say you own a restaurant and you wipe off your tables, your bar tops, things like that, mop the floor, retail space, things of that nature. A deep cleaning is taking it a step further. And the reason you want to do that is because these viruses attach themselves to dirt, dander, grime, grease, all those things that we're trying to clean off. Mm -hmm. So if we can remove those things from our area, then we can remove the, the areas that they hide in. That way, when we disinfect, we can have a better chance of killing the virus itself. So depending on the amount of filthiness or, or dirt that's involved would require whether you do a deep clean, a regular clean, or just do a disinfection. So a awesome. deep clean would be the next step, and that's where you would take it to the next level. Let's say you're at a restaurant and you wipe off your bar tops and your countertops and your tables. Well, it's not just doing that, but it's the undersides of the tables, the backsides of the chairs, anywhere anybody could touch, the doors, the door frames, door jams, handles. You want to take it that next step further and get a good deep clean and get all services cleaned. A lot of times, um, and I'm not saying this is wrong, but when you go to a restaurant and you eat at a table, as soon as the, uh, the patrons leave, they wipe the countertop off or the, or the tabletop off, mm -hmm. and they reset it and you're back in business. Well, you need to go a step further than that in this situation. Uh, people grab the table to pull their chairs in. They'll grab the chair from behind to push it in. They'll touch several things around that table, not just the, ta the tabletop itself. All those areas would need to be cleaned. Now, once they're cleaned, then you want to do what's called a disinfection. And that's when we're going to use some of the list in EPA certified products that you can find online. Um, I believe the list started with 17 pages now we're up to 42 of approved products. <laughs> uh, these products are disinfectants that we feel, the government feels like the EPA, CDC, will kill the coronavirus. They have been known to kill other type viruses, small and large envelope, which is what a coronavirus is. So they feel that these will also be able to kill the coronavirus. So, so far, sorry to interrupt, but so far you've talked about a deep cleaning and then a disinfectant. Yes. Okay. All right. And a regular clean. And a regular clean. <laughs> right, right. Um, but the disinfection is the best. Is, is the most important part in the last step after you get the cleaning done. You want to use these, these, these disinfectants to put them all on all the commonly touched surfaces, use it in ventilation, um, all the key areas inside the building that people are going to touch. Again, I go back to the doors and the door frames. People mm -hmm. don't just use the knobs. They'll grab the door. They'll lean against the frame. Uh, restrooms, spray all the, the sinks, the handles the uh, dispensers for the soap, the paper towels. All these things need to be touched by a disinfectant. These disinfectants, and, and they will tell you which ones are approved on the list, it'll also tell you what their common dwell time is. 
But dwell time is the amount of time that that liquid needs to remain on the surface before evaporation so it can effectively kill the virus. So this, this is very important. A lot of people want to spray it on a rag and wipe it down and wipe it till it's dry. That's what we're used to doing. That's not how it works. Sure. The product needs to stay wet for the amount of time that the EPA recommends for it to work and let it naturally evaporate. You have dwell times anywhere from five to 10 minutes. And they vary based upon the product based that you're using. Based upon the product. The next thing I would caution you on on these products, there's a wide variety that work and there's a lot of them that are available to you. But you need to know what type of product you're using. Is it a plant-based product? Is it a mm. hydrogen peroxide-based product? Is it a chlorine-based product? Hydrogen peroxide and chlorine-based products after their dwell time need to be cleaned behind because of their corrosive nature. You don't want to touch those surfaces. It could irritate your skin, it could get in your eyes, it could be harmful. So a lot to think about then. A lot to think about. And not, not trying to, to pump your business, but whether it's you or, or any other restoration service, but uh, prior to this, this virus, uh, I'm a business owner. I had no clue that that type of cleaning needed to be done. So now that we have the, the virus that's, that's, uh, that's impacted our, our world, um, how often should this, should this take place? How often should this cleaning, well, I think what, that's, what's your preferred, yeah. That's gonna be broken down by the type of business you have, the amount of people you have in your business and the type of cleaning you do. Um, like you were saying, we do this business, this is what we do for a living, but we also know this is not something that is commonplace. This is something that's going to have to come out of the business owner's pocket. It's not mm -hmm. an insurance covered claim right. like a lot of losses that they're used to dealing with our type companies with. Um, this is preventative maintenance to try to keep their employees and their customers healthy. So it's going to come out of their pocket and we know that. So we want to be smart with the way we, we approach this and we want to do it on a case by case basis because some, some companies do their own cleaning. Their employees clean after every customer or after uh, every night service or what, whatever it may be. Maybe we don't need to do a clean for them. Maybe we don't need to do a deep clean. Maybe we just need to do a disinfection for them at the end of the day. Gotcha. Uh, maybe it is a, a, a place that's never had a deep clean and they need one. Maybe we just need to do that once. And then after that, we'll stay with a, a disinfection. But again, those things are gonna depend on the company and what their needs are. And then at some point, just listening to the government and the president speak and the governor, things are gonna get back to normal. So it's just a wait and see type approach. Uh, do we need to disinfect once a week now? We've done a deep clean, we do our daily cleaning as a company. So now I'm gonna call in Phoenix to come do the disinfection for me. Sure. I wanna do that nightly, I wanna do that weekly. I just wanna keep up with that standard until we start seeing those numbers come down and the, and the government says, you know, we're getting back to normal. But I would encourage you also to remember, this is a cyclical thing. Uh, COVID's basically a flu type virus. The flu comes every year. These are steps and, and concerns we need to learn and carry forward with us to the next cycle, coming next fall, mm -hmm. next winter, and keep up with those things. Very good. Clearly, I can see that, that life is changing. Yes. I think we all can see that and, and we all understand that. Um, what advice, it looks like you gave some good advice earlier, but what advice would you give to the, to the folks at Broken Arrow um, that own businesses and then also that are, are uh, going to businesses that are just uh, going to go maybe go out to eat or go into a retail store. What advice would you give them for this, uh, for the next six months, let's say? That's a long period of time. Right? Yeah. Okay. Three months. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, well, well, I think it's a lot of it's just common sense. You can see a lot of our grocery retailers have, have used that method to keep their stores open and keep people safe. I think as we start to open business uh, locally in Broken Arrow, whether it's restaurants, um, laundromats, whatever it may be, we need to use that common sense approach. A lot of the pressure is on us as individuals. Yeah. It's, it's just hygiene. We need to keep our hands clean. We need to, to not <laughs> go to work. People have not been to work in so long, I understand this, and you really want to work. But if you are sick, you do not need to go to work. That needs to be the first priority. And that may be something that the owner takes on to make sure that his employees that are checking in to work are not sick and if they are to send them home. We need to practice social distancing. Perhaps the, the staff should wear masks around the customers. Maybe even the customers that come in mm -hmm. should wear masks. 
but the, the key thing would be to constantly clean your hands. We need to clean surfaces, we need to clean behind every customer, no matter what business yeah. it is, especially in a restaurant type business. One more question. I heard, and, and again, on the calls we heard of these, these fogging bombs or whatever, the, I don't even know what the right term is to use, but is that something that you offer or is that something that, that you recommend? We don't offer fogging bombs. We're not a <laughs> pesticide company. Okay. Uh, but we, we have a similar product that we use with a UV thermal fogger. Mm -hmm. We put a plant-based product in this UV thermal fogger. We can fog with a light mist uh, this product and it adheres to all the surfaces that it touches. Uh, we can shoot that through a ventilation system. We can spray down walls and doors. Again, the dwell time is what you're looking for. How long has it been on the surface before it evaporates? Gotcha. Very good. That's all the questions I have. I think this has been very informative. I appreciate your time. Anything else you want to mention that I maybe I left out? I know we talked about not all businesses are the same. Not all are the same. We're yeah. going to have the same needs. We yeah. just need to look at those on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. And being local here in Broken Arrow, a part of the community, the chamber, uh, the Rotary Club here, we want to support Broken Arrow and get them back open. If there's anything that we can do to assist, advice is always free. We want to make sure that we get our, our uh, folks here in town open back up. Anything we can do to assess or to help with that, we'd love to. Very good. Mike, thank you for your time. Thank you. I'd shake your hand if I was allowed to. But <laughs> I understand. That's all for now. That's that's a, an extended uh, did you know and kind of a informational piece. I know it's longer than normal, but we felt like it was necessary to educate and inform uh, both the merchants as well as, as, the, as the people of Broken Arrow. So thanks again for joining, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.